Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Jeff from DNH Distributing. And I'm Aaron Shelton, also from the Cisco Business Unit. And we're here to talk to you today about one of our favorite subjects. Every year we do a little event called Meraki Oktoberfest. And what we do is we sit down and we celebrate all things going on with Meraki. And we got a lot of subjects to talk to you about today and a couple demonstrations quick to show you to walk through. So to get started, we're going to talk about the brand new MX appliances that have just been released. And Aaron, tell us about those new MX appliances. We have uh, two MX appliances that have come out with a few different variations within each model line. There's the MX67, which has five port switch on the back, and an MX68 with a 12 port switch on the back. And some of those ports are PoE, so you Ooh, can run a device out there if you need to. Uh, and the really cool feature that we have now is an integrated SIM on these models that have a C in the part number. So you'll have an MX67C that actually has an LTE port on it, so you can put your SIM card in and fail over to 4G if you need to. Yeah, because these routers are really designed for you to be able to run your cellular connection as a primary connection if you need it to. Uh, a lot of the other solutions uh, out there, including some of the previous Meraki, you know, they have that USB port on them uh, that they put in there for using cellular. The issue that we tend to see with uh, that type of solution is that not all the dongles are created equal. Some of the manufacturers make changes to them, which take them out of spec for the devices. The providers are constantly changing them. It just makes it a real nightmare to try to get all those to work correctly together. So by integrating the SIM, like Aaron said, it just makes everything so much easier. What else has uh, increased uh, along with that in the new series? Uh, they've actually increased the throughput with these as well. So they nestle nicely between the MX64 and 65 series and the MX84 series at 450 megabits per second. We're right in that sweet spot between the two uh, MX lines uh, on either side. Absolutely, and you got to keep kind of keep doing that because again, as time goes on, things get uh, more and more fast as they go forward. So again, as the speeds start to pick up, Meraki's putting out new appliances that can help keep up with that bottom line speed that a lot of providers are starting to ask. Another big subject that has come up with Meraki is the brand new umbrella integration into the MR wireless products. Some people have used Umbrella with the appliances in the past, but they've done it by using the OpenDNS settings that are in there to just have the clients uh, ping off the OpenDNS servers. But this is brand new because a lot of people have an Umbrella dashboard already where you go in and you create your advanced security policies. What this now allows you to do is take your MR wireless products link them into the Meraki dashboard so that when you're setting up your SSIDs in Meraki, you are now able to pull security policies that were written in the umbrella dashboard directly in and associate them through the Meraki dashboard. So it's kind of like bringing both worlds together. And again, umbrella is a really cool solution. It's not priced expensive. It's a really nice cloud method for adding security. And when you stack that with the fact that, you know, Meraki already works with AMP uh, for the advanced malware protection and it has IPS, this is really just another wonderful way to take that Meraki solution and make it more secure. And one thing that I think we want to do, well, you know what, let's, let's not talk about it. I think we should show them, Aaron. Yes, absolutely. All right. We're going to show you very quickly how this works. So let's go ahead and get started with pushing this through the Meraki dashboard. Your first thing that you're going to want to do is come into your Meraki dashboard, go ahead and log in with your information. And select the network that you're going to be doing this work on. In this case, we're going to go into the DNHUS demo. And the network that we are currently working with is the uh, Solutions Lab network. The first thing that you want to do is under wireless, come in and check your access point to make sure that you are running the latest firmware on those particular access points. On this particular one that we have the umbrella set up on, 
you can see that we are currently running version 26.0. So that is the version that you need minimally in order to have the uh, umbrella integration up and running. The next step is to log into your umbrella dashboard. And here we have the login for the umbrella dashboard. I went ahead and already logged in. In order to make all of this work, the first thing that you have to do is associate the two pieces. So you're going to want to come in here and you're going to want to make sure under admin that you go to your API keys. Now this piece we've already done for you, but this is where you actually get your token and your key. This is important because when you come to the Meraki dashboard, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go under network wide and general and input that information in there to start the connection. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you will see a place where it talks about your umbrella account. This is where you want to go in and make sure that you put in your token and upload your key. Once that information is in there, the two accounts are linked. From there, you can actually come into the wireless access points themselves into the firewall and traffic shaping. <laughs> and this is where you can select your policies as they're listed on Umbrella. So if you come here and you can see we have our default policy listed. If I come back here to the Umbrella dashboard and I go under policies and I look at all policies I have created here, you can see that the default policy here is what's being pushed. If I were to add a policy under the dashboard, let's say that I was creating a policy for uh, different locations, I could come in here, I could select the default site, hit next and decide what I want to implement on these particular devices. Maybe I want to apply the destination list rules to it. Do I want to enforce security at the DNS layer? Yes. You know, maybe this is just guest access and I don't necessarily want to inspect all the files because that can add some time. I can come in here and create these different settings underneath. For this particular exercise, we're just going to go with the basics. Uh, limit content access, you know, we're going to go with moderate instead of high. As we create this new policy here, we're going to stick with the standard lists. We're going to use the umbrella default uh, appearance. And we're going to name this DNH. So you can see here that we created a brand new policy within our umbrella engine. If we come back here to the Meraki policy, we should be able to see that here. And that is how quick and easy it is to get the Meraki dashboard talking and cooperating with the umbrella dashboard. Like I have said before, you've always been able in the past to be able to use DNS server numbers with the uh, Meraki solutions. What this really helps open up though is it protects that last mile, that sort of zone between the client and the access point on its way out to the internet. By integrating Umbrella in here and creating your security policies and restricting sites and stopping you know, sites that have bad reputations from coming in, being able to set up these policies and enforce them from the client all the way through the whole system, that is really about what the Meraki umbrella integration brings to the table. That is pretty cool. Yes, it is. So, the next thing that we're going to move on to here is the Meraki MV12. Now, this is a product that came out a few months ago. But boy, it really has some cool features, and there's some new stuff that has really come out with this. And really tell us, Aaron, you know, what are some of the new things that these cameras do? I'm, I'm actually really excited about these. Not only is it a nice, new, small form factor, uh, they've added some new features that aren't, weren't available on the previous models. 
Uh, first and foremost is Wi-Fi availability. So you don't have to run a hardwire connection from your switch to the camera anymore. You can actually connect through Wi-Fi and capture your video that way. Uh, second, there's actually onboard audio. So they've built in a mic. If you want to record the situation, uh, a particular setting, you can do that now. And finally, uh, and this is really cool, uh, there's actually motion classification. So it'll detect people versus a dog. If you, there's a dog running through, it won't necessarily capture that, or you can turn it off so it won't capture that sort of motion detection. But people, it'll identify specifically, and it learns its situational, uh, it learns its area as it goes along. So uh, as it gets used to its environment, it'll learn what people look like in that environment, and you'll get more accurate results from the feature. And that really is cool because, I mean, think about it. it. When you have motion detection and everything on cameras, like that's nothing particularly new. But motion detection has always been kind of quirky in that, you know, if I were to push this gnome off the table or, you know, throw this laptop, you know, it would count the motion of those objects coming, even if I wasn't here or could see me doing that motion. So what this really kind of opens up here is the ability for you to say, okay, did that paper blow off the table because of the wind and that's what tripped the motion? Or was there actually somebody there pushing it off the table? So the ability to classify the emotion, it, that is really, really cool. And as a matter of fact, I think we should show them a quick look, you know, at, at what some of those capabilities are. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. So we're gonna go back into our solutions lab network here. Uh, and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna take a look at our cameras. So when I come up here and I go into our cameras, you can see that we have two cameras currently set up on this network. We have one of the original MV21s and we have the new MV12W. So if I click on this particular camera, this starts to load the feed that we have here. And from here, I can actually click on and select a date for software playback. So let's go back here and let's take a look at August 23rd. So as I jump back here to August 23rd, the Solutions Lab's where we do a lot of our recording and stuff here at DNH. So if I jump here to the 23rd, I have an option here that I don't get with the other uh, cameras, such as the 21. If I click on the show people, this is cool. This is where you can actually come in here and see the system starting to identify individuals. And those yellow circles that you see popping up on the video are there and follow them to identify what the system recognizes as a person. So as they walk around the room and start to set up, it's going to capture and it's going to tell you exactly what was a person, let you know what it identified as a person and how it counted it. After that, you can actually come into the analytics here and you can get some really cool information about what it has seen. So as I come down here and I take a look uh, over uh, last hour, I can see that there were 45 entrances into the room, basically meaning 45 times somebody came in and left the room. Here I can see that that rate has steadily increased. So again, the estimated key peak capacity has been two people. And that was a max of two people at 1057 AM. There were 232 total entries uh, in here. And of course, the most utilized time in here or the time that the most amount of people were in here and the most amount of traffic was seen was around 10:57 a.m. So again you can drill down into some of these things you can see the heat map that's on them you can even break down into particular moments in the video so here I'm actually jumping into where it saw people and again, you can see that there's somebody there and there's the individual coming in the door there uh, that's representing the tracking for everything. So it's quick and easy to jump in and out of that video to see exactly what's happening or where it's identifying people. Again, I can try a different one here and it'll jump me to that particular time space 
and again identify where it's seeing people or objects it can classify as people in all of this. And that was just a quick look at what the MV12 is capable of doing with its new character recognition. Now they're not just going to stop there, they're going to keep going with that. Uh, there's some new software, new road mapped items that are coming out. There's going to be some brand new APIs coming down the road as well for the cameras that are going to allow you to take this information and really go much, much further with it. But the MV12 is a pretty solid product, a lot of enhancements over the 21. Uh, there's a few more enhancements, aren't there, uh, Aaron? Yeah, there are. Uh, and there's actually two models involved here. So there's the MV12 uh, narrow and wide. So we have a narrow focus lens and a wide focus lens for those situations where you need to capture more of a scene. Okay. Uh, another thing that they've done with these is there's still the onboard storage like the other models, but that's bumped up to 256 megabytes. Oh, nice. If you run that 256, it's going to really, really extend uh, the capability of the storage on the camera. And uh, finally, it uh, runs at 1080p. So if you want to capture really high resolution video, ah. you can do that with these cameras. So you're definitely going to need that extended storage for your higher capacity video as you go. So the MV12 camera is a pretty cool product. Uh, we really suggest you uh, check it out. This is it right here. New little product, uh, uh, like half, like over half yeah. the size smaller than the original MV, uh, MV products as well. So again, it really kind of is a, a cool product and, you know, that's, I don't know what else to say about yeah. it. It's discreet, lightweight, and easier discreet. than ever to install with Wi-Fi. So what's going to be our last subject here, Aaron? Oh, well, last subject here, we're going to talk about Meraki Go. Meraki Go. So this is a really new product launch. Uh, from Meraki. Meraki Go is a little bit different than regular Meraki. Meraki Go is actually, and I have one here for us yeah. to take a look at, <laughs> Meraki Go is really a product that is designed for simplicity for the really small independent business owners. And they rate these at 50 users or less in general. And they are really designed that way because not only do you have the access point, that comes in the box. Everything else you need to set it up, including the simplified manual, as well as the power brick, everything else is all included in here, including the mounting utilities as well. They also have the outdoor version of it as well, which is sitting right here in front of me, already set up to go outdoors. You don't need to put it in an enclosure. But before we get into the product itself, you know, what is Meraki Go about, Aaron? Uh, it's really about having a budget option for the, some of those smaller businesses. Uh, so if you have uh, a situation where you need less than 20 APs, less than four SSIDs, this is perfect for that. You're going to save a lot of money on it. Like the other Meraki product, there's one, still one, three, five, seven, and up to 10 year licensing. But that price is greatly reduced. And uh, the management interface is really intriguing too. Uh, it's still kind of web-based, but you're actually looking at a phone or tablet management style on this one. Absolutely. There's a lot of little things about Meraki Go that you want to know. You have to manage it from a handheld device. Uh, some other things about it, there is limitations of how many access points and devices it can support through it. It's really, again, designed for small independent businesses. We're all, we all know the big coffee shops and the large retailers out there. A lot of them have solutions that need to tie in together because they have a lot of branches and everything needs to be managed from the single interface. <laughs> but what if you run a small coffee shop? What if you run you know, a small retail outlet and you don't have a bunch of stores, you just have one or two, or you run a very small hotel and you're not part of a chain, but you want to be able to manage Wi-Fi and give those, you know, high chain feel to your business. That is what Meraki Go is all about. It all runs from, again, a device. I run my Meraki Go right from my, uh, right from my phone here. And I'll show you quickly here a little bit about what that looks like and how easy it is to set up Meraki Go. So here on my phone, if you come in here, you can see that there is a Meraki Go app. When you log into the Meraki Go app, you'll set this up uh, as you set up an account for, uh, for your Meraki Go device. 
As soon as it puts you in, it starts to tell you information about what's going on on the network. It tells you what the high usage devices are, how many devices have been connected to your network, uh, the average usage as well, and the application breakdown of how your network is being used. And again, this is a view of all networks. If we come in here and take a look, we can see that right now we have a Meraki Go network set up. Uh, from here, we can see how many devices have attached to it, how many are currently attached to it. And again, if we want to add devices, that's even easier. If we come in here and take a look at the app, we can see that there is already one device connected to it. We're going to go ahead and add another device up here in the corner. And it's very easy to do this because each of the devices has a QVR code on the back. So if we come here, we can quickly see that all we have to do is scan the QVR code on here, or you can enter the serial number if we need to. Hit OK, hit Done, and we've immediately added the device. So again, there's just some information about how you want to lay it out, where you might want to put it in. It kind of walks you through the whole process here. We're just going to skip that part of it here, and we can see now that we've actually added another device into the network. We don't have it currently plugged in, so it's not showing up as active yet, but that's all that it takes to associate the device to your network. <laughs> if we go back to home and then back to networks, we can see that that device that has been added is using all the same credentials as the original network that we set up. So now there's two access points acting on behalf of that as others. Under settings, this is where you can actually go in and start to play with uh, some of the other stuff. You can set up usage limits on the network uh, if you like. Here you can see that we have a uh, bandwidth set up uh, usage of about 5 megabits per second uh, on the network so that we're capable of doing high definition video. We can, we can move that around just as a simple pointer. Uh, if we wanted to be able to change that, simply click Save when we're done, uh, making any of those changes. And again, we can add a bunch of different limits if we would like to. We can control this for up to four SSIDs. So you can create up to four individual SSIDs on this device. Bear in mind that this is a single account control system, meaning that you can't control the account from multiple devices. Once you load the app and you have the app set up, everything you're controlling is through this app. That includes, again, creating your own uh, IDs for the, own, for the individual once you get everything set up and running. Web blocking is also something that you can come in here and do. We don't currently have any set up, but if you wanted to do something like block YouTube or block social media, you can put those sites in here uh, to set up some blocking on these particular devices. So that is pretty much what Meraki Go looks like, uh, how easy it is to set up. Very simple to use. Again, 20 access points per uh, account as it sits right now. And the account is only configurable on one single uh, instance of it up and running. And that is how easy it is to set up Meraki Go. Again, a nice product for the people that really like Meraki, for the small independent businesses that want to look like the big guys, but again, are on that very tight budget. All those controls are capable. Simple, through the phone management, that is what Meraki Go is all about. And we've talked about a lot of great things today, haven't we, Aaron? Yeah, we have. We've uh, covered the new MX devices and some of the new features that are available there. Umbrella integration with Meraki, which is just fantastic. Another way to secure your network. Uh, the new MB cameras with their uh, assorted features, and that's just going to keep getting better and better. And finally, Meraki Go, a great budget line entry point for small and medium business and uh, ready to go out of the box. Absolutely, it's been a great 2018 for Meraki, and we absolutely enjoyed talking, you today, talking to you today uh, and coming out with us for the Meraki Oktoberfest 2018. Please stay tuned afterwards for the live Q&A. 
If you have any questions about any of the stuff that we talked about, feel free to contact us at Cisco Specialist at dnh.com or if you're a member of the Meraki Driven program, you can contact us at Meraki Driven at dnh.com. That's a great program as well for keeping, keeping your Meraki business in order. It really is. Yes, and if you're not a part of it, we encourage you to ask about it. But thank you again for joining us. Thank you again, Aaron, for yep. doing this with me. And thank you, Jeff. All right, take care.